This is the TLWR1502X Wi-Fi 6 portable router by TP-Link. In this video, I'm gonna tell you if it's any good, why would you even need a product like this, and how does it compare to the other travel routers I've recently reviewed on this channel? Let's get into it. I recently did some videos on some travel routers by GL Inet, and I've done some videos on turning your Raspberry Pi into a travel router. Today we're looking at a travel router by TP-Link. My name is Patrick and this is Everyday Tech. Everyday Tech for Everyday People. TP-Link is a very well established company that's been around for a while. I actually use some of their products in my home network here and I've used a bunch of their products in the past as well. So I was really happy that they reached out to me and asked me if I'd take a look at this travel router here. Full disclosure, although TP-Link did provide me with this product for free, there are no view in this video before it goes up. All my opinions are my own. Before we go on, let me tell you why you would even need a travel router. Now I've mentioned this in my past travel router videos, but I thought I'd quickly mention it here. First, it's the matter of convenience. If you are in a new location and you have a bunch of devices that need to connect to a new Wi-Fi network, uh, instead of connecting all those devices to the new Wi-Fi network, you can just have them connect to your travel router. You can set that up beforehand. And then when you get to the new location, you just have to worry about connecting the travel router to the new location. Second, it's the matter of security. Especially when you're, let's say, at a coffee Wi-Fi, coffee shop Wi-Fi network, a lot of times that traffic is unencrypted. And so your data is just open to everyone who's listening. Also, this just gives you another layer of protection. And then also, if you connect this to a VPN network, that gives you also another layer of protection. Lastly, if you have a production setup like a streaming setup or a remote video setup, this is a great way to have your own private network specifically for your production setup. I'll give in more into that later in this video. This is the Wi-Fi 6 router supporting up to speeds of 1200 megabits a second on the 5 gigahertz band and 300 megabits a second on the 2.4 gigahertz band. It has a USB port that you can easily share files off a thumb drive or any portable USB drive. You can also plug in a 3G or 4G USB modem into this port as well. You can easily connect other VPN to other VPN servers, whether it's a paid service or your at-home VPN server. This is very portable and can be easily powered up by PowerBank, although you need to check the output of your PowerBank. And I'll get into that in a moment. Looking around this device, we can see that this is a very sleek and good looking device with its all black finish. On the front, you have this cool heatsink style vent design with an indicator light right in the middle. On one side, you have more vents with the TP-Link branding. On the other side, we have the WPS slash reset button. Now, if we hold this down this for one second, this puts it into pairing mode to pair with devices that support WPS. If you hold it down for six seconds, this will reset the router itself. Next to that, we have the switch mode. This router can be put into three different modes. We have access point mode, hotspot mode, and router mode. And let me illustrate what these different modes do. So let's start with AP mode or access point mode. Let's say we're getting our internet connection from our home network here. And then we have our TP-Link travel router, and we're connecting that to our home network via ethernet. And then the device is connected to the TP-Link connect via Wi-Fi. But let's say our home network has an address space of 192.168.1.x. And this is very typical of a router for a home router. And then this means that since we're in access point mode, our devices connected to the TP-Link are gonna get the same address space. Basically, they're on the same network as other computers. So if we have other computers connected to the network, even if it's not connected to the TP-Link, they are given the same address space, they're on the same network. That means they can see our devices that are connected to our TP-Link travel router. In router mode, we're back at our home network and we connect via ethernet to our TP-Link. And of course, our devices are connected again via Wi-Fi. And again, our home network has this address of 192.168.1.x. But since we're in router mode this time, our devices connected to the TP-Link are given a different address space, 192.168.0.50. Now, even though it's a difference of one number on the, on the third number there, 
it's a totally different subnetwork. It's within our home network, but it has its own subnetwork, which means other computers that are connected to our home network that are not connected to the TP link have no access to our subnetwork or our private network. All the internet traffic that's being sent from our home network to the TP link is routed into our little subnetwork there. So this gives you a little bit different security or different setup depending on your needs. And hotspot mode, and you typically use this at a coffee shop or a public Wi-Fi. Let's say in this case, we're connected to a coffee shop network and an ethernet connection is not available to us. We connect our TP link to the coffee shop network via Wi-Fi. And then our devices don't connect to the coffee shop network directly, but they connect to the TP link via Wi-Fi as well. And the coffee shop network has, let's say, an off address space of 172.16.101. Our devices connected to the TP link are given an address of 192.168.0.50 and 0.51. Basically, the TP link created another private network which our devices are connected to, but it routes the internet from the coffee shop network to our devices there. So, what this means is, other devices connected to the coffee shop network can't access this private network that you just created with the TP link. So they have no access to it. Looking at the ports at the back, going from left to right, first we have the USB-C power port, which does support power delivery and quick charging ports. Now, one thing to know is that you need to look at the power requirements for this thing. Yes, you can power with a power bank, but the power bank needs to output nine volts or 12 volts. So with my old RAF power power bank, the USB-C port only outputs five volts of power, which means I have to use one of the other USB-A ports that does output at a higher voltage. This is more an issue of my particular power bank, but we, if we compare this to the gl -INIT portable router, the gl -INIT only requires five volts of power. I'll get more into that when I do a head-to-head -head comparison between these two routers. Now moving on to the USB port, this is where we can plug in a USB drive or a USB modem. This is a USB 2.0 port, so it only supports up to 480 megabits a second. Now the good news is that it does seem to support a wider variety of file formats. It was able to read my macOS formatted portable SSD drive, which the GL INIT didn't. Finishing up on the ports, we have two, two gigahertz gigabit ethernet ports one is a LAN port and one is a WAN port. There's no option to convert the WAN port into an additional LAN port though. There is an admin interface and it's via a web interface. They do have a dedicated app just like the other travel routers do, but I always prefer the web interface because I never know what device I'm gonna connect to, to the interface itself. Once we come connect into our travel router and we go to the dedicated web address for the web interface, we come to this page, This First page shows us our network map. First, we can see what internet connection we're connected to. Right now, I'm not connected to anything, but this would give us information on our internet connection. Then this icon here shows us the different configurations of the TP link itself. We can go to some of the configurations directly from here, turn on and off some of the settings. We could see some of the performance and we can see what's connected to the different ethernet ports. Then we have the internet icon up here, and this is where we would connect to our internet connection. Let's say we're at a coffee shop, and you'd say Wi-Fi scanner, connect to the coffee shop network, and we're pretty much ready to go. Wireless is where we would configure our hotspot. I'm not gonna do that right now because it has my personal settings in there. Then if we go into advanced, in advanced where I'm not gonna go through all these things, but there's so many settings that we can configure in here including our firewall, VPN service, and even parental controls. You pretty much can configure everything in this interface. It's a pretty intuitive interface, and so I like it just as much as the GLINet one. That interface is pretty intuitive as well, just with a different kind of layout. Recently, I was in charge of streaming a church event, which was held at a conference center at a hotel. The hotel provided me with a wired ethernet connection, which I put into a switch, and then I connected this travel router to that switch. So I had both my wired and wireless connections of devices connected all into one network. I put it into access point mode, so they were on the same network. 
And now that I think about it, I could have put this into router mode, connected the wired Ethernet connection from the hotel into this travel router, connect the switch into this travel router as well, and I would have all the devices connected together, but on a private network. So next time I go on, on a remote location like this, I can get everything set up at home, connected to my travel router, and then when I go to the remote location, I'm already all set to go. So how does this compare to the GL iNet travel router, and in particular, the Barrel AX model, which is also a Wi-Fi 6 travel router? Let's do a head-to-head -head comparison between the TP-Link and the GL iNet. We're gonna be comparing the following features, connection speed, network ports, USB ports, interface, power, and price. As far as connection speed is concerned, the clear winner here is the GL iNet. It has a rating of 2400 megabits a second on the five gig gigahertz band. That's twice the speed of the TP-Link. Now, even though it is twice the speed of the TP-Link in real world use, you may not ever hit that 1200 megabits a second speed depending on your device and depending on your connection speeds. But if you're connecting more devices to your travel router, it's nice to know that you have the extra bandwidth on the GL and the iNet to handle all those devices at once. As far as network ports are concerned, both have two ethernet ports, one WAN and one LAN port, but I'm gonna give the edge to the GL iNet because you can convert and switch that WAN port to a second LAN port. Also, that WAN port is a 2.5 gig port, but you do need the hardware to support it. As far as the USB ports are concerned, the GI Net has a USB 3.0 port, the TP-Link has a USB 2 port. The USB 3.0 port is way faster than the USB 2 port. So you may think the clear winner here is the GI Net, but I'm gonna go ahead and give this a tie. And the reason is the TP-Link was able to read my Mac formatted drives. The GL iNet can't. And I could reformat my drive to make it compatible with both, but all my drives are already Mac formatted. So I would give this a tie, but I would say for most people, they would probably give the edge to the GL iNet. As far as the interface is concerned, both have a very easy to use web interface where you can pretty much change any settings. So this is gonna be a tie between the two routers. As far as power is concerned, the GL iNet does use less power, you can use five volts of power to power it up. So the edge goes to the GLI net. But the biggest difference between these two will be in the price. As of this recording, the TP-Link retails for about $60, but you can often find it on Amazon for about $50. The GLI net retails for $120, but you can find it on Amazon often on sale for around $86 to $87. The clear winner here is the TP-Link. Now, even though it seems like the GL iNet has a few more pluses over the TP-Link, those pluses are very minimal, actually. The biggest difference, I think, between the two is the price. So what do I think of the TP-Link TLWR1502X travel router? I think it's a great product. Gives me all the features that I need at a great price. It has great connectivity speed and it allows me to use it in different scenarios with just the flip of a switch. Now the big question is, would I recommend this over the GL iNet travel router, and especially the Barrel AX? I would say yes. This gives me all the features of the Barrel AX at about half the price. Now thanks to TP-Link for sending this out to me. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Consider hitting that subscribe button. Until the next one, see ya.